Muji is a brand that has created a cult-like following. And when it comes to my friends, when I ask them about Muji, their response is on the extremes. It's usually them not knowing about Muji or them being obsessed with Muji. I first discovered Muji because of my good friend Mikkel and because he was telling me about his favorite pen in an oddly, overly enthusiastic way. So Mikkel shares with me how he and his friend Brian had the same overly enthusiastic conversation about that same pen. And while he was telling me, I was thinking to myself, guys, relax, it's a pen for f**k's sake. But then, okay, I got intrigued as to where this excitement was coming from. So I did some digging and soon found out that this reaction, it seems to be normal for the people who love Muji. Because Muji is so much more than just that pen. And as corny as it may sound, Muji, it's a way of life. Hey everyone, this is Chris Gurdin, and today we're going to talk about Muji. Before I forget, please check out our podcast. We actually upload more episodes there. Just search for Brand Origins on any podcast app. Muji didn't actually start out as an independent company. In post-war Japan, the country experienced a lot of economic growth as it was recovering. And during this period, the Japanese were enjoying the influx of foreign branded products entering Japan. The entry of luxury brands slowly shifted people's preference for foreign goods, and they started perceiving them as high quality. But then, in the 1980s, Japan's growth was slowing down, and gradually, consumer preference was starting to shift to less expensive items. So on one end, people could get themselves high quality products that were branded and were more expensive, and on the other end, were products that were low quality, cheaper, and generic. And so this company called Seiyu saw an opening. They thought, what if we sold cheap products that were of high quality and were generic or brandless? So in December of 1980, Muji was born, not as a standalone company, but only as a product line under the supermarket chain. But the Muji line, it became so successful that nine years later, Seiyu decided to turn it into a separate independent company. This became the Ryohin Kikaku Corporation. By 1999, Muji was pulling in sales of $1 billion annually. And you can't have that without a strong brand. And that's exactly how Muji sets itself apart. I think since Muji is selling items without their own logo, Oh, by the way, Muji comes from the word Mujirushi Ryohin, or Muji for short. And this means quality products without a logo. So for Muji to be as successful as they are today, you have to admit that this has everything to do with the brand. I don't think people are drawn to Muji because of their brandless products, because you can get that somewhere else. But it's what Muji is all about that has created this cult-like following. You see, whereas normally, the common approach is that a brand identifies a problem that needs a solution. Then, the brand then creates a product that solves that problem, and then it sells it to the consumer. Muji, on the other hand, has identified a way of life. A life of simplicity. And it works by understanding the needs of the people who want this type of life. And then, Muji creates products that allow these people to live that way. The brand's core philosophy is about the concept of kanketsu, or simplicity. It's a traditional Japanese value of prudence and self-restraint. It's something that tells you this is enough. And for something to be enough, it needs to serve its purpose. The brand says that its objective is the product's essence. So if they're selling something as mundane as a mop, let's say, a lot of thought goes into designing a mop and how people use it. All this thought goes into removing the subtle or minor inconveniences that we experience when using items like that mop. Because Muji, they know that these inconveniences, it, they add up, and that will cause us to get rid of that mop and purchase a new one. So Muji believes that if it can create the perfect mop, that will be enough. The idea is not about simplicity for the sake of simplicity. So it's not about just having the white space minimalist look. It's about simplicity as a result of removing unnecessary additions. The term that best describes Muji products is Spartan Luxury. It's a product in its most basic form, but in a form where an item can be used or functions in the most effective way. So utility and functionality are not sacrificed because you do see a lot of these fancy hipster type beautiful products that when you finally use them, you realize that it looks good but the experience in using them is horrible. So they end up not serving their purpose. Muji products are beautifully designed, but in a way where it's not attention-seeking. It's gonna blend in quietly in your room. 
And if you see their products, they're all basic but necessary. As a source described it, Muji creates quality products at low prices for a reason, on the basis that the products are fundamentally designed for the consumer's daily life without extra complexity. But personally, I wouldn't call Muji low priced. It's more appropriate to call it reasonably priced. Now about their products. In the beginning, Muji only started out with only 40 products, and their ads said that the slogan they used was lower priced for a reason. They sold pens, notebooks, uh, simple storage units, and kitchen products. And they had these wrapped in clear plastic, plain brown labels, and of course, their brand name, which was already in red. It really is the classic Muji look. Today, Muji has more than 7,000 products and man, the range is just so diverse. They're now selling umbrellas, portable lights, sofas, and well, I just found out earlier that Muji has been selling houses. Yeah, in 2004, Muji has partnered up with an architecture firm to build and sell prefabricated houses. And apparently, they're still doing it today. Oh, and in 2018, they opened Muji Hotels in China, and the brand said that the hotel will give people the physical experience of the Muji philosophy through the sensation of towels, the placement of outlets and light switches, restaurants and menus, space, and more. And now since Muji has hotels, why stop there, right? Because apparently they also have the Cafe and Meal Muji, the Muji campsite, as well as a floral arrangement service. But I think the most extreme one would have to be the Muji car. In 2001, Muji partnered up with Nissan and released a limited edition car. And there were only a thousand Muji cars sold. Of course, you can only get the car in one color, and that's white. <laughs> it's such a Muji thing to do. Unsurprisingly, because of the pandemic, Muji was forced to make adjustments. So just this year, in 2020, Muji launched its furniture subscription service in Japan. Basically, you can rent a desk and a chair for around $7 per month, or if you plan to keep it longer, you can just get the annual plan. This kind of works for those who may not need their setup for a really long time. Also in 2020, Muji has begun testing the Muji convenience store concept. Right by the fruits and vegetables, they have signs that show you information where the local food came from. Muji shares that the goal of this Muji market was to get customers to think about the producers and the places where the food came from. And unlike how supermarkets normally throw out fruits and vegetables that don't meet the standard shape and size, they're gonna be selling them all to avoid food waste. All of these contributes to the growing influence of Muji's brand, and because of this, despite their size, the brand actually spends very little on advertising, and instead relies heavily on word of mouth. But what may be at strength in Asia may not be working for Muji in the US. In July 2020, Muji's US business filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It listed assets and liabilities in the range of 50 million to 100 million US dollars and estimated the number of creditors at 200 to 999. The brand was already struggling even before the pandemic hit. It has 19 stores and was operating at a loss for the past three fiscal years. What made Muji so successful in Japan was its anti-consumerism philosophy, advocating for high-quality items that have longer product lifetimes. But in America, majority prefer buying in bulk and valuing aesthetic over function. And although Muji tries to offer its products at affordable prices, they're not necessarily affordable. And so US shoppers would just head on out to Target and get cheaper versions of the generic products that Muji offers. Remember, Muji's strength was its brand philosophy. And if people don't buy into that, their products are nothing but generic items that you can get anywhere else. And that's what's happening in the US. It's not only happening to Muji. In February 2020, the direct-to-consumer e-commerce brand Brandless shut down. Brandless was launched in 2017 and was selling generic high-quality goods, but that didn't work out well for them. And so with this, you get a trend to why the idea of this brand philosophy may not be suited for the US market. And unfortunately, it's not only in the US. In China, Chinese courts have ruled in favor of a Muji knockoff brand. And since they lost that, their products are now being copied heavily. On top of all this, well, the COVID-19 pandemic. But despite this, in July 2020, Muji has shared that they still plan to expand its global network to 1,138 stores by August of next year. Just like the rest of us, 2020 has not been kind to Muji. But I do hope it recovers. Because it just feels like everything that Muji stands for, the idea of simplicity, is exactly what our world needs. And so that's about it guys, now you know what the brand origin story of Muji. 
If you like this episode, please tell your friends about our podcast. We're still very small, so a single new listener is a massive boost for us. We're also very active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so please follow us there as well. Until the next one, this is Chris Gardin.